mighty and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tonight we're going to continue in the series, The Battle of the Mind. I'm going to subtitle this. The word is the total provision for victory. We're going to continue in the series, The Battle of the Mind. Subtitle, The Word is Total Provision for Our Victory. Tonight, the main scripture will be Romans chapter 6. That's Romans chapter 6. That's Romans chapter 6, and before we read that, I would like to say to you, I, 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 I knew a man who was so troubled. He was troubled from birth. For even at an early age, before he was three years old, he was bound by the enemy with a sickness. I know a man who was so troubled, even from a little child, that even as he grew up around his family and around his friends, no one really knew the trouble that this man was in. No one really understood the chains that he was put in even before he began to walk. I, I know a man who was put in chains by devils and demons because of the ignorance of the word that his parents walked in. I know a man that even when he heard the other children pray, play, and when he heard the other children cry, and when he saw the other children run up and down and go swimming and play basketball and kick the can and hide and go seek and hot potato, when he, when he saw the other children playing those games, he heard voices. He heard other spirits say, you can't do that. You can't be like them. I heard a story of a man who heard devils and demons speak to him in other voices. I, I know the story of that man very well because that man was me. That man that I'm talking about tonight was delivered by Christ from Satan's clutches. Asthma at two years old, all kind of medications that didn't even work. Couldn't play like the other kids, couldn't run, couldn't jump, couldn't eat peanuts and walnuts and almonds and couldn't eat chocolate and couldn't wear cotton t-shirts or polyester t-shirts without breaking out into severe allergic reactions. Couldn't join the basketball team. Couldn't join the martial arts team. Growing up very insecure, very weak. Hardly no men in my life, surrounded by women, ungodly women. Women that I love, but nevertheless, listen for the meat of the story. I grew up surrounded by women who knew not the word of God. I grew up around neighbors who knew not the word of God. Except for this one lady who was my neighbor, older than my mother, but she constantly asked my mom, can she take me to church? I didn't want to go to church. I didn't know that church existed. And when I did ro roll by, when my father in the car took me by a church, all I heard was loud music. And if I could see through the door, I just saw grown people falling out and making noise. It, it scared me, really. 
And one day, my mother told the lady yes. And she took me to church on Rockaway and Livonia in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Mm. And they sat me in the front because she had to sing in the choir. So she was my overseer at the time, so I had to sit in the front. I was so afraid. I looked to my right and I saw somebody being dipped in water. Mm. And then I became very, very afraid because to me, it looked like they were killing this person, but they were baptizing the person. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand what was going on. And those older ladies, they were speaking in tongues, sounded like a bunch of howling Indians, no disrespect to Indians anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid. And it wasn't so bright at the where the baptism pool was, kind of dead, lights were dim and so forth. So, and there was a spirit right there, a spirit of fear telling me they gonna kill you. They drowning that lady. They murdering that lady. You better run out the door. And I could feel fear trying to enter my being. And I really literally wanted to run out that door. Why am I telling you this story? It's a very small part of the story, by the way. I'm telling you the story because I want you to understand that I'm not just somebody who thinks he's a preacher, or somebody who said, I'm going to be a preacher, and this is what I'm going to do. No, I was called to be this. And I was called out of something else. I was called out of a troubled mind. Trouble from you, from the youth. Do you know that it is possible for a three-year-old to have a troubled mind? Mm -hmm. If the parents are troubled, where is the child going to get a peaceful mind from? No when the parent, are, they are the vessels that transfer whatever they have. Mm -hmm. And so if the heads are dirty, then the body will be dirty. If the heads are unclean, if the heads don't have guidance, if the heads don't have direction, if the heads don't have peace, if the heads don't have joy, whatever the heads of the house have, that is what also the children of that house have. And so I'm talking to people tonight that know you were born, it, 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 you were born that way. It just, you just, you just entered the world and trouble was there. And even though you wasn't the, the cause of that trouble, trouble found you, found you in your head. Worry and fear, no peace and thoughts of hate and thoughts of murder and thoughts of jealousy and envy, malice and wickedness, thoughts of darkness. Right now, I see some, you, not right now, <laughs> but I see in this day and time, I see young children walk by me in the anger in their eyes, in the hate in their eyes, in the envy and the jealousy they have towards other children simply because they don't have what the other child has. And they're not being trained on how to get it. I walk by children who have turned into an adult. And I see despair and depression and darkness in their eyes. And it caused me to go back and look at the tape of where Christ has brought me from. To relay to you this truth. You may have been born into troubles. But you can be reborn into peace. You may have been born being raped by your father and being touched by your mother or sold by your mother to men that were not your father. But you can be reborn into God's grace. 
You may have been born in a household full of alcoholics, in a household full of quote-unquote religious people who took the word in a fleshly manner and transferred it to you in a dark way and now you hate God because your parents walked wrong with God and treated you wrong not knowing they were really walking with the devil. I'm talking to people who were born and Uncle John touched you and Uncle Mary hated you for no apparent reason to you. I'm talking to people who were born in a household where parents didn't really give a damn at all and treated you with all the disrespect that Satan treated them with. You don't have to stay the way you were born. Because Jesus Christ is the living word of God and he makes it so that you can be reborn in his bosom and all old things will pass away and behold all things will become new. I don't expect everybody to understand that because a common minded man cannot receive the things of God. So as you hear me, receive the faith that is coming from the word of God and walk by faith and not by sight. You have to trust the Lord in order to receive a changed life. The battlefield of the mind must be dealt with with the word of God for the word of God is your only and total victory. I used to think when I was a child, where were the men? I saw my neighbors with six brothers and a father. I saw the other neighbors down the block with multi brethren in the family. But I felt, I used to say, why am I the oldest? Because I'm the oldest and I'm the only male child. My, my sisters are younger than me. And along with the insecurity that was given to me by the adversary, also came this, an awareness of fear. If you have an awareness of fear to fear, and it is not the fear of the Lord, the enemy has walked across the battlefield of your mind. And if you're living in that, you're losing a battle that was already won for you over 2,000 years ago on the cross. When Jesus died for you, the Bible says in Isaiah, he took all of your iniquities and all of your transgressions and bore all your sins upon his body on the cross. And by his wounds, you were healed. The word of God is your total victory over sin and shame over abuse, over, you know, there, there, are, there are people right now, I'll use me for, answer, for, for instance, because my dad wasn't on the scene when I was a child, I envied other children who had fathers who were present. It raised the jealousy and it raised the envy within me and an anger even towards my moms, I couldn't see him, so I would blame my moms. Like, why my daddy here? And if my moms, when I saw her character and her weakness inside me, I blamed her for my father not being there. 
There are people right now who are blaming God for things that he had nothing to do with. Even though I couldn't see God, and even though I couldn't hear, I thought I couldn't hear, and I thought I couldn't see. I knew because I saw grass and trees and water that God was alive and that there was something bigger than my parents who could make something that felt and looked ugly become beautiful. I grew up feeling ugly. I grew up knowing what ugly was and is. What is ugly? Ugly is darkness. Ugly is sin. Ugly is rape and ugly is murder. Ugly is stealing and ugly is, is, is stabbing somebody and setting somebody on fire. Ugly is when three children burn up in the fire. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Ugly is when somebody refuses to believe in the true and living God and set candles all around their house and make prayers to a devil mm -hmm. that can't give them life. Ugly is when a, a, a parent has children out of wedlock and then call those children blessed. Ugly is when you walk in ignorance of the world. Ugly is when Satan becomes your God, not because he is God, but because you made him your God by choice. Ugly is witchcraft. Ugly is rebellion. Ugly is hate for your neighbor because their color of the skin is different from yours. Ugly is when you hear God and you still tell God no. Ugly is when you have a, a newborn child and that child in the spirit of the devil come and put asthma or cancer or lupus or sickle cell anemia on that child and you walking in the ignorance of God don't know it's the spirit putting these things on your child whether it is directly by the spirit or because of the effect of sin that touches the body. Nevertheless, sickness and disease don't come from God. Ugly is when a young 17, 20, 21 year old mother who had a child out of wedlock got to carry a son who can't breathe, not knowing how to fix it, not even knowing how to fix her own troubles. How can a man in bondage free a man in bondage? How can a parent raise a children in freedom if the child, if the parent is in prison themselves? I'm hitting it this way tonight because I have to do this. There is a new way. There's always been that way. That way is to receive Jesus as Lord. And to surrender your life to Christ and to trust him for he is and always will be total provision for the believer. That's what changed my life. The word of God changed my life. And just a little while ago it got a little rocky inside me. The battlefield of my mind became a little clouded. And as I petitioned the Lord on what should I do, what should I say, his answer was simple. Do what you did in the beginning. Surrender. For those trouble right now, in the physical, you cannot let the physical determine the power and the authority of he who is spirit. 
There are many troubled minds right now in the body of Christ that should not be and out of the body of Christ that should be. This you may not understand, so I'll explain. In the body of Christ, all the provision for a soldier to have was provided. If we use it and use it according to his word, we will win every battle. For those who are outside of Christ, there's no battle for you to win. For the Bible says, all must come to Christ to the Father. For the Father has reconciled all men unto himself through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only path of reconciliation the Father has designed for man to take. The Bible also says that when Adam and Eve sinned, sin fell upon every man. Yes. Even before they were born. Even in the loins of Adam. Amen. Eve carried the curse. Eve, excuse me, Adam carried the curse once within him. And Eve bore them. But there's a second Adam. And the world needs to know that the second Adam is alive. To break the chains of what the first Adam caused. And the world needs to know that the reason your mind is troubled is because he who is peace is not inside of you. And for those who have him on the inside and you're finding trouble, you're finding trouble because you're being misled by yourself to disagree with he who is already your peace. Your physical outside should not determine your spiritual presence. Peace is not physical. Peace is the fruit of knowing Christ Jesus. And so when you find trouble on the battlefield of your mind, the only true way to rectify, the only way that I know to rectify is to humble yourself before the Lord. For you who have money, I want to talk to you. Because for the people who are so enriched with money, money is your God. For many of you, not all of you, because there are truly dedicated Christians who are multi-millionaires in Christ Jesus. I'll say by faith that I'm one. If Christ it's not the highest reality of love. Whatever you love the most, right now while I'm talking, mm -hmm. is your God. Yeah. Even if you say out of your mouth, Jesus is my Lord, the fruit of your heart tell the truth. Mm -hmm. We know this. We know this because in Romans 7, chapter 7, verse 13 and 15, all sin is conceived in the heart. All murder, all malice, all adultery, all lying, all stealing, all envy, all jealousy. It don't come from Satan. It comes from in a wicked man's heart. It comes from in, from within an unrenewed heart. A heart that is not illuminated by he who is light. And Jesus is that light. See, I know why man is so upset. I hear them. I hear them on TV. I hear them on the radio. A lot of men and women are upset that the Father has only made one way to himself. And so I want to talk to you tonight. I want to tell you first, my advice to you is to repent because who put you over God and who told you what you said was more higher than what God said? And who told you you can do what you want to do, as opposed to doing what the Father has told you to do, and do it the way he showed you to do it. My life was really a mess. 
Somebody may look at my life and say, your life is a mess now. Why? Why? Because I don't drive a Phantom? Why? Whenever you hear the Spirit of God tell you she's here, and you turn and say, who's here? And he says, your wife is here. And then the doorbell rang, and it's your wife. Whenever you are filled with the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues, whenever you hear God say, while the book is closed, not that way, this is the way. Whenever you are a prisoner of the spirit of whoredoms and his spirits of addiction and you get delivered without medication, without no outside uh, help from no other man, I'm talking to people who know God. If you know him, you already won. The person who knows Christ And knows the Father through Christ, you have already won. If you allow the outside physical things to dictate to you if the Word of God is going to be real, the battle in your mind is going to be all unleashed hell. But if you would receive Christ and trust Christ and believe in Christ and stick to His Word, don't worry about nothing. He's going to help you all the way through it. He even gave you a promise to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Even when death, even when it's your time to go to sleep, you still can't be separated from the true and living God. And so I want to talk to you people who are in the house and the heat is not on. I want to talk to you people who is in the house and the heat is not on and you got three babies and they call and then you hear the preacher say Jesus is Lord. This is where I want to help you because there's a battle that taking place. What, you what your mind has been trained to see is telling you God is not real because if God was real you and your children wouldn't be called. I'm telling you Jesus is real and in this holy book full of a lot of very bad things he tells you what to do in every situation and every circumstance. One is believe before you pray that God is so good that he has already given you the desire of your heart. And then pray by faith to a living God. And then you shall see the answers to your prayer. I'm not finished telling you about the story of that man I used to know. One day that man was walking across the street, just coming from a five to six day drug run in the middle of the winter, in the middle of the blizzard. Couldn't get in the house no more because he took everything, he stole everything that he could carry. Wife didn't want to really be bothered with him in that state of mind. Wasn't changing his clothes. Wasn't taking showers. Walking around in his own feces. He was losing his smile. 
What he did not know, he had already lost it. Walking up and down the street, not even concerned about food, not even concerned about water, that life uh, maintaining gift of God. All he was concerned about was drugs and getting high and escaping the reality, the reality that many people try to escape through all different forms and fashions. He was trying to escape the reality of an inner prison he was aware of more than maybe many. And one day, he found himself in the projects in the hallway, freezing cold. And all those he's just finished spending his $600 with, they all disappeared. But there was one he thought he had hope in. The one who he gave the most. And so he knocked on the door and he said, listen, can I come in for a little while and get warm? If I can't stay the night, then just let me go out and I'll go. And he was told no and the door was closed. At that very moment, he began to hear spirits talk. And they began to tell him, we're going to kill you. God don't love you. Your wife ain't never taking you back. You lost your kids forever. Somebody gonna kill you before you leave the building. And I think that man was like on the 17th floor. As I walked down the hallway, I could feel presence around me. I couldn't see them, but I could feel bodies. With every step I took, I felt presence with me, walking with me, talking with me. I could hear them. But one of them was stronger than them all. The spirit of fear. The more he spoke to me, the more afraid I became. My mind became consumed with his words. I get in the elevator and I go down the stairs in the elevator. It's all the same thing is going on. Nothing is changing. I'm becoming more afraid, even to the point where the hairs on my body is standing up. Even between my legs, even under my arms, the hairs in the back of my head, the hairs in my ears were standing up, pointing outward. Some of them were so sharp, they were sticking me. If I put my finger in my ear to move it around, it just hurt me more. I get to the first floor, and now I'm so blind with fear, I can't move. I'm talking to people that have been paralyzed by the spirit of fear. And they're living up in there, living up in the mind. Just, just, they just, they're just using your mind as a hotel. I couldn't move. So I begin to inch, and I begin to cry. And there, were no, there was nobody in the hallway. The hallway was empty. And it was a fairly large hallway, and it had a little arc to it. And the lights were flickering, one light on, one light flickering. And as the wind from the storm in the physical blew, and I heard it, the wind from the storm in the spiritual, was blowing and I felt it and I heard it. The journey from the elevator door to the outside door was not very, just a couple of feet. But to me, it was miles away. It was so far. I finally make it to the door. I get in the outside court and I hear a voice tell me, you're going to die right now. Somebody's going to run up on you and kill you right now. And if you make it to the street, you can't cross the street. The bus is going to kill you. The car is going to kill you. And so as I made it to the curb of the sidewalk, 
A bus came. And then a truck came. Coming at the same time. One going that way, one going that way. And traffic behind them. So if I did not cross, I thought at that point, I would not make it across. I would have to stay where I was afraid to be longer. So I made an attempt to cross. When I put my foot into the street, I could feel the angel of the Lord stop me. He didn't say anything. He just stopped me. When he touched me, I began to scream, Father, you promised, Lord. Father, you promised, Lord. You would never leave me nor forsake me. You promised, Lord. You would be with me in season and out of season. You promised, Lord. That the angel of the Lord was in captive about me. Father, in the middle of the street. And Mother Gaston and East New York. Father, you promised me. Father, you promised me. I heard a teacher somewhere say, if you go to God with the promises that he gave you and pray the promises back, he would answer you because you're coming to him with the truth and truth begat truth and truth answers truth and truth, truth, truth is the key to freedom. I heard him. I did not know what I heard was on the inside of me. I didn't know that when you hear the word of God, faith, to believe the word of God comes on the inside of you like faith is coming on the inside of you who are watching me right now. I did not know like you do, don't did not know. And when the word of God is preached, faith, something untangible, something non-physical is happening to you. I crossed the street. It was a blizzard. I had blisters on the bottom of my feet that were bust open for walking on hard clumps of snow hours and hours on end without taking showers, without taking baths. See, 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 somebody is listening to me that knows what bondage is like regardless of the title. I'm telling you, I may not be in it under your title, but I was in it under the one that was under me, over me. And I'm telling you, the same God that delivered me will deliver you. And you only need one. Why? He's only one. Some people, you watch it, you got 3,350,000 gods. And you still got problems. It's an indication that you're following the opposite of he who is the true and living God. Light has a response. You know what the response is in short? It's victory. I crossed the street and there was a church there. It said, it said, El in 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 Grecia, the church, right? I wanted to go in, but I heard the Spirit of God say, "Don't go in. Walk by the park." I'm crying. I'm yelling. I'm talking to him. You promised me. You promised me. He said, "Will you listen to me?" I heard him. He said, "Will you listen?" I said, I'll listen. He said, do A, B, C, and D, and I'll change your life. I said, yes, Lord. And I'm in front of you over 15, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Telling you that Jesus is Lord. Jesus. And that if nobody's paying attention to you, for whatever reason, God made me aware of you. You may be in a very deep, dark place of depression. You may be in a very deep, dark place of despair. That worldly holiday, Christmas is coming. 
Yeah. And them devils is telling you, you broke, you ain't got it, you ain't gonna be able to take care of the kids, you ain't gonna do this. The heat is off, the water's broken, it's rats in the building. Yes. And then when you get on the train and go to work, you see rich people who ain't giving you a dollar. Mm -hmm. And that devil trying to tell you to kill yourself. Turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And I'll come back to you the next time I teach with the message for tonight that I had down. But tonight, the Lord says, say this. John chapter 3. Look at verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, teacher, we know that you are a teacher from God. For no one can do these things that you do unless God is with you. Even the vipers, even the vipers knew he was from God. Amen. How much more word do you need to hear for you to realize that Jesus is Lord and receive him for yourself? See, if you can't, there's a spirit there. A evil spirit there and is fighting you with all he knows how. But nevertheless, he cannot be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. If you have the strength to call him, he has the strength to save you. Look at this. Verse 3 2. This man came to Jesus by night and said, Then, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. From God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with you. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And now I'm saying to you, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, your outside situation is not changed by outside means. Your inside prison is not open and the chains are not broken by outside means. They are changed, broken and changed by the word of God. By receiving it and taking it as the truth. The truth, knowing the truth, shall set you free. Yes, thank you. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So no matter what you've heard from the time you was a child, because most of the stuff I've been through was because I heard something, a lie, that when I was a child. Lies grow up with people. And they become serious, serious strongholds that would prevent you from walking in freedom. One is, there's many ways to go. Stop it, you devil. And you devil carry it. God going to deal with both of you. The devil has an ending. He has a destination. And so do those who follow the devil and prevent those who want to be saved from being saved by filling them with lies. Let that be a warning to you, devil worshippers, you Satan vessels, vessels of dishonor. Even being so blind, you don't know that God made you a vessel of dishonor. Like he made Pharaoh a vessel of dishonor to prove his glorious 
and wonderful love for man. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born? Now this is answering many of your questions because you want to know, but you won't go read. So God sent the preacher to tell you the answer to the question, how can a man be born again? How can the battlefield of the man's mind be set in peace and discipline? How can a man's life change? How can a man's uh, broken marriage be rearranged and healed? Yeah. Not just mended, healed. With no scar and no blemish Thank of a wound. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? No. If I see that, I'm really calling on the name of the Lord now. Because if I climb back in to where I came out of, my mother going to beat the fire out of me. What's wrong with you, boy? You done lost your mind. Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay. Unless the Holy Spirit leads you to the Father through Christ, you can't find him. Just Let's just do that right there. Simple class, one-on-one. -on -one. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Capital S, Spirit. That which is born of the Holy Spirit who is the living spirit of God. You see, 99 if not 100 problems, they come from that which is born of the flesh. See, Satan is carnal. I wish a lot of other preachers would say it. Satan is carnal-minded. Satan is carnal-minded. He can't walk in the mind of Christ if he paid God. And neither can he repent. He locked himself in. He locked himself into God's wrath. He's going to get it whether he wanted it or not. But for you who want to believe and obey God, trust God, this is you. This is your path. John chapter 3. Born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you. Don't be amazed. Jesus is telling them, don't be amazed. What you being amazed for? The truth is talking to you. You must be born again. What happened in that man's life I was talking about earlier? I gave my life to Christ. Amen. And I want to say something about, you know, when we say we gave our life to Christ. What it really is, is the Holy Spirit led us to Christ. Why? Christ chose us. Why did he choose us? Because the Father gave Christ in our, in our lives in his hand. And Jesus said, no man can take out of my hand who the Father has given me. In other words, the Father has given me his name. And Jesus will always protect those, and always love those, and always take care of those who carry his name. And that's not to say that if you don't believe in him, you don't, he don't love you. Well, obviously, duh, that's a lie because I was a sinner. I was a sinner without God's grace and he loved me. And now I'm the son of God who, walk, who walks in God's grace. He's a merited favor. Do not be marveled, verse 7. That I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it will, where it wishes, and you hear the wind, you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it's coming from. See, there are, there are troubles attacking the mind from the out. You can't tell where they're coming from. You're trying to figure out why I can't get out of this. 
What's going on in my house? My neighbor got a BMW. They got children. They ain't fighting. They ain't drinking. What's going on in my house? Why my house? Listen to Jesus and find your way out. For with every temptation, Jesus is the way of escape. Listen to yes. Jesus and find your way out. Look at this. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. You ain't never seen nothing like this before. You ain't never seen this sober mind before. You ain't never seen this kind of deliverance before. What I'm living in now is something totally different from what I was born in. What I was reborn into is something totally different from what I was born in. The rebirth don't come with troubled truth. The rebirth come with the truth that produces the peace. You want to settle that storm in your mind? Settle yourself in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Receive Jesus as Lord and begin to put your mind on the mind of Christ Jesus written on these papers. And God will change your life. Amen. Is the world automatically just going to get up and fix itself? Amen. I'll tell you this. Amen. God going to set this baby on fire. Amen. It has to be cleansed. If the spirit of man has to be purged by the spirit of God, then the earth made by the Father's hands must also be purged. You see, when you're in Christ, you don't have fear. But all of you who just heard that, and you don't understand that because you don't read the scriptures, you might be afraid. The reason you're afraid is because you don't know his promises. The promises of God bring peace to a troubled mind. Before you can receive the promises of God, you need the mind of Christ. You need to receive Jesus as Lord. He's calling you. The reason the church is the, is the, is the body of Christ is because our husbandman has called us unto redemption. And without the call, there will be no salvation. He's calling you. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter where you was born. It doesn't matter if your parents was raised in witchcraft. It doesn't matter if your uncles are alcoholic. It's all about you. Salvation is all about you and the Lord. Will you receive the Lord as Lord and Savior? And watch him change your life, your life, your life. Not your mother's life. Not your father's life. Jesus. Not your child's life. Your life. Why? Your life matters. Yes. See, I don't like this thing, black lives matters. I don't like this thing, white lives matter. Yes. From God's perspective, life matters. Yes. Hallelujah. And your life matters. Glory. And right now, the Holy Spirit is showing you through a man. Who could have been anything else? What he wants you to know. This is how it all begins. The new birth. The new life. This is the reason for the resurrection of Christ. Your Easter Sunday ignorant people going church people. Carrying reeds around and you don't even worship God in your conduct. You worship God in your hat and your suit. Yes. You can go to church in an Adidas suit. And shorts and tens. If you worship God in your conduct. That's true. This is that. what church is about. This is what it is about. Jesus. And many of the body of God have left this truth. They have left this. And turn, and turn the gathering of the saints 
into something where the enemy is able to gather in the midst of it. It's not even God's desire. Verse 7. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear it, the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him in verse 10, are you the teacher of Israel? <laughs> Look how deep Jesus deal with the scholars. Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assured, I say to you in verse 11, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Verse 12, if I have told you earthly things, this is Jesus himself talking. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, doubt sets up the perimeter and tells Satan how far he can go inside your mind. Are you listening to me? Yes, Doubt paves the way and lets Satan know how far he can go within your mind. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, verse 11, and you do not receive our witness, verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Spirit, carnal-minded man cannot receive the things of God until he receives the mind of Christ Jesus, and that mind cannot be received if you do not receive Jesus as Lord and come to the Father the way He designed, you can have a mouth full of intelligent words. And you can have money coming out your baguzi, whatever that is. None of that says you're saved. Christ says you're saved. Verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. There it is. If you have a troubled mind, first do this. Believe this. Receive this. Let me not say this. If you have a troubled mind, Receive the living word. Revelation 19, 13. Jesus is the living word of God. Yes. Who has written his word. On the Father's command. In this book for you to know. Get it into your life. Look at it. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. When was the last time you heard that? Wow, you got preachers who haven't heard that in like 10 years because they ain't read it. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Listen to me, people. You got people, the ministers and doctors are preaching up a storm. They are out there telling you in every way they can that there are so many ways to God. I'm telling you according to the word of God, there is only one. And I just read to you and presented to you that way. And if you would take it tonight, your life would change. The battlefield of your mind would become what it always was intended to be. Peace, discipline, able to handle anything, everything. Not worry about anything external, not concerned about anything that God ain't concerned about, not worried about the kids. Why? When you know who God is, you know that God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see, but I know something about a Christian who's having a problem. I know why. You're having a problem because you're not operating in the 
principles of Christ. You've read it. You've told it. You hear it. But operating. You see, looking at a shovel in a blizzard, seeing the shovel in a blizzard, knowing the shovel was outside your door in the blizzard, stuck in the snow in the blizzard, it's one thing. But going outside and picking up the shovel and making a path for you and your family to get out, that's another thing. Amen. Faith without works is dead. dead. Yes. If you want your life to change, you have to make the step. And don't let the devil tell you you're making the first step. Jesus, Jesus will never let man make the first step. He's always the first. First expression of the Father. The first one to come from heaven and come down here and live with man. The first one to die on the cross. We don't need another. The first one to shed his blood. The first one to take a beating in his body and by his wounds. We are healed. You will never be the first. Jesus is the first among many brethren. But you will be one. Give your life to Christ. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. You see? You see? If you don't come to Christ, it's because your deeds are dark. It's because your heart is evil. Look at this. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. People love to sin. People love to sin. I'm talking to you people. You don't want to be where you are. You just found yourself there. I get it. For I was brought into the world the same way. I just found myself the way I was. And it was like, wow, I can't change it. And neither could my parents. But I'm telling you, the parent of life is calling you. It's calling you. Verse 20, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. There it is. Mm -hmm. There's only one line between mm -hmm. the light and the darkness. This is how you know all people. You, 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 if I read this to somebody that I'm, that, that's connected to me right now, he wouldn't know what to do with this. But I know what to do with it, so I don't got to read it to him. I just pray it to my Father. Let not those who are of the darkness supersede the victory you have gave me in my life by Christ. Mm -hmm. Pray the word. It says, but he who does the truth. Verse 20 again. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, least his deeds should be exposed. The reason people don't want to come to God is they don't want God to tell them who they are. Mm -hmm. They don't want God to tell them who they are. They don't want the light to reveal to them the darkness that is within them because everybody want to be who they want to be. Yeah. You see, if you love adultery, you don't want to stop. If you love to watch porn, you don't want to stop. Hallelujah. If you love to touch things that don't belong to you and steal things that don't belong to you, you don't want to stop. Satan don't want to stop being Satan. Mm -hmm. Why? He don't want to approach God. His deeds are dark. He don't want you to see him for who he really is. Why? You might not follow him anymore. His deeds are dark. And all darkness will be dealt with by the light. And so if you have darkness inside you, darkness inside your mind, the way to the, 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 the revelation knowledge of God will clean that darkness up out of you. God will come inside of you and change you. Hallelujah. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. The first clean act that any man can do in any given day, in any given moment of any given day, is say, Jesus, 
receive me into your kingdom. Forgive me of all my sins. Lord, the blood that you shed for my sins, let it be so upon my life. I surrender my life to you. I denounce from flesh. I denounce from worldly gain and worldly pleasure. And Lord, I surrender my life to you. And then just tell the truth, Lord, I don't know what none of that looks like. Because to be reborn is a brand new thing. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Lord, show me by your Holy Spirit and through your word how to live the way you want me to live. So I won't follow some cultic pastor talking about Jesus told me to put 666 on everybody. And got everybody walking around with 666 on his shirt and 666 tattoos on their body and 666 in the back of the church. I love you. This is Minister Lawson, Family Worship, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry. We're going to get y'all, we're going to get y'all. Y'all going to see me and Pastor I met up here together. I saw that today, so I'm just boldly declaring that today. And um, you're going to see how God uses two men as one in unity, without war, against each other. And we love you. This is Alan Lawson, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry. Go to our website, www.familyworships.com, and check us out. The thing that touches my heart when I think about the website is people leaving your names. There are things that a man of God can pray for that a person who doesn't believe in God can't pray for. They can pray for it, but God is not going to answer them. But he will answer his sons. Let's stop playing games. If you know you haven't been walking with Christ, Yo, get on the website, leave your name on the website, leave your son name on the website, leave your daughter name. If you don't want to leave your real name, okay, leave whatever you want. We, when God, God knows who you are. Because we want to pray for you. We want to pray that all be well for you. We want to pray that whatever Satan is bringing up against you, God will turn it around for your good. We want to pray that you become a member of the body of Christ without man's laying on hands. We want the Holy Spirit to bring you to the Father and the Son. We want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. We love you. Praying for you. Stay in your word. Remember. There will be no peace in the mind mm -hmm. until you have he who is peace mm -hmm. inside your spirit. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.